All right, guys, so this is how I load film onto a reel to get ready for chemical development. This is what you need. We've got your scissors, the roll of film, and a daylight developing tank. This is the Patterson Tank System 4. There's a couple different versions around, but they're all basically the same, which is gonna be the cap. This is still technically daylight safe. Uh, it's light baffled so that you can pour your chemicals in and out and then lid and do your agitations. So you've got funnel cap. Uh, the lid, that's the funnel there and the light baffle. Got the cap seal. C-clip lock for the inner spindle to keep your reel from moving up and down on the spindle while you uh, agitate the developing reel and the spindle. This is the Patterson plastic developing reels. They do break apart for easy cleanup and drying. They are also for two different sizes. So we have 35 millimeter go up just a little bit and that would be for medium format 120 uh, which all the steps for that are gonna be very similar to what you see here but we'll do that in its own video as well now a couple things if you look at this reel you'll see these two little triangles sort of jutting out onto the inside of the reel those are very important you're gonna to need to know whether where those are at uh, we've got ball bearings right on the inside of each of these. That is what's going to actually catch and lock into the sprockets, and that's what makes it self-feeding. So you'll turn forward, pull back, and that pulls out of the cassette. Now, uh, you may have seen this in any of my other unloading videos, unloading the camera. I always rewind the film after I've exposed the entire roll and leave the leader out right past or right before pardon the take-up spool and leave the leader out so that in the daylight i can cut straight across in between the sprocket if you roll the cassette all the way back in what happens is then you have to break apart the cassette in the dark, fumbling around with your hands. It can get a little annoying, it can hold you back. It can also just increase the amount of time that you're spending in a film changing bag or a dark room, which means your hands will get humid and uh, a little bit moist, and that will affect your loading negatively. It sucks, it's annoying. So, that is how I prep my cassette for loading. If you did rewind all the way back into the cassette, you would need one more thing, and that's going to be a bottle opener of any sort, most will do. And in the dark, we're gonna wanna put this, I like to do it, this is the way it's been easiest for me. Upside down with the, what do we call that? I don't know. Exit door right here, tucked in in the left hand. Push that down right there on the right. Lift usually takes twice around. Oh, maybe three. There we go. And again, this would be in the dark. I like to avoid doing this at all anymore, but if you have to, that peels off the tin. And as you're doing this, you're gonna be careful. This is all sharp edges and can mess up with the film. You would pop that out and then this would all unroll and then you would have to do that on the spool. So I like to avoid doing that altogether by leaving the leader out. All right, so how to load the Patterson plastic reel. Got here my dummy roll. So we'll show you with this one. It is light struck. I'm not worried about it being ruined. So this is what it would be like in the back. Tuck it into the left hand. Pull the leader out just a little bit. You know that this is all light struck anyway from when you load it. And remember those two triangles? I'm gonna find those in the dark. Got one with my left, left thumb and one with my right thumb. I'm gonna pull those back together so they're parallel. 
left hand. I'm gonna push the film up just a little bit, grab it with the right thumb and forefinger, pull out, and then just slide it. And in the dark, you can hear the click as the film clicks down into the uh, spool track. Just like that. Give it a nice little pull, only about a quarter of the way. It doesn't need to go super far. And that's enough for it to catch the ball bearings right inside. Once I've done that, move this over like that, find the left triangle with my left thumb again, grab the cassette, pull it out, set it in between my pointer finger and middle finger. Find the right triangle with the right thumb, and then push forward, pull back, push forward, pull back, and self-feeding. Do this all the way. Kind of slow down as we get towards the end. Eventually you'll start to feel the tension as you get to the last little bit that's wound inside the cassette spindle. Yeah, there it was. Now sometimes, again, it gets really tight just around the first couple of rounds around the uh, inner spindle. So sometimes that is the end, sometimes it's not. You run it carefully with your right hand, pull on it a little bit, and yeah, that's the end of the roll. So, in the dark, I can take my scissors. Cut across, drop that down. Line this out a little bit and finish self-feeding the roll. You can see how it kind of jumped the track. That is something that you can feel in the dark because you're trying to find that triangle and you can tell if the film's over it. It just takes a light bend and it'll pop right back in. You need to do that a couple more times just to make sure that the end of the roll does go inside the track. If it's left on the other side of these two triangles, you risk it curling in and touching the inner, I don't know, the inner roll. And that'll cause development issues. All right, so we have the spindle back on there. Normally I would have just left it right in there. Now we've got the lock, the seal, the funnel, and the cap. This is now daylight safe and can come out of your changing bag or out of the dark room. You can hit the lights and get ready for chemical development. Now I have film changing bag. This is what that looks like. Open it up. Big old bag, right? It's got two sleeves here on the one side. This is where your arms are gonna go in. And inside the bag. And on this side, some Velcro patches, which bend over the end. Right in there, we've got a zipper. This is how you would load the bag and then unload it. So, this is how I like to set up the inside of my bag so I know where everything's at when I get in there in the dark. Got my tank, reel in the center. The roll of film I will, uh, will be loading right now, which is the Ultrafine Extreme 100 black and white roll. I'm gonna put that over on the left as well as the scissors over on the left, all right? I get my lid with the clip right towards the back end of the bag. And then quick tip on this, I always have a second reel. Again, humidity will catch up uh, the longer you're in there fussing with the film. That'll start to get your ball bearings to stick a little bit. Sometimes uh, the flow is just not right and it's just the film sticking and it'll start to bend or kink and that's really bad for the film and is not something you can fix once it's happened. So if I'm not feeling the flow with the first reel, I have a second one and I can keep that right there and just stop, take a, take a moment, pull the film back out and then try it with the second reel. That has saved my butt many times. It keeps you from having to pull your arms out of the bag while there's still film, uh, light sensitive film in there and risking any light exposure. All right, so that's everything I need in there. Zip this up. Get those Velcro patches matching. Pull flat. And I'm going to load up 
Let's roll a film. 